Here we go. I'm here today at Grand Central Station. I meant to say Grand Central Terminal. Grand Central Terminal. First fact, in 1871, when the station first opened, it was called Grand Central Depot. By 1901, after reconstruction and expansion, it was labeled Grand Central Station. And again, 1913, after further construction on the building that we know today, it was rechristened Grand Central Terminal. The station covers 49 acres, has 44 platforms, 67 tracks, and over 1 million people pass through the station per week. The main concourse here is 88,000 feet in size. The ceiling is 12 stories high with 2,500 stars and zodiac constellations painted above. Quick fact here, that clock behind me, it's estimated to be worth 10 to 20 million dollars by auction houses. The whispering gallery. If you stand in one of the corners and whisper, the other person can hear you on the other side. Oh, okay. So the station itself was the brainchild of Cornelius Vanderbilt, who both instructed and financed its development. If you look hard enough, you can still find hints from his legacy from his family motto, which was, from an acorn, a mighty oak shall grow. So it was October 4th, 1957. The Soviet Union just launched Sputnik. In order to reassure the public, the main concourse here became the site of a redstone missile. It was so big that a hole had to be punched in the ceiling to house the missile comfortably, which if I did this right, should be right behind me. Should be right behind me. So I was mistaken. The rocket actually fit quite comfortably. The hole instead was used for a wire that was to help stabilize it. 